it's the penultimate home game of the season for Argyle. A season of highs, lows, joys and despair. A season of change and disruption. But one thing has stayed the same. The fight is still there. And that fight continues against the top side of the table. A side that just six years ago were the best in the country. Leicester City are in town and are angry after a midweek loss. It's almost as tough as they come. But this is Argyle and this is Home Park. And anything can happen. Hello and good evening. Welcome to the Argyle TV pre-match show with me, Erin Black. Uh, fighting spirit that Argyle have shown on so many occasions will have to be evident tonight as they take on Leicester City. There are just 12 points up for grabs from the remaining games and five might just be enough to survive the drop. And well, we'd love three of those to come tonight. For Argyle, it's about building momentum and getting enough to stay up. And for Leicester, it's about finding form and being better in order to win that promotion they so desperately want. So a lot at stake then on this Friday night. And we have you covered all the way on Argyle TV. Match passes, both audio and video, can be found on our website pafc.co.uk and as it's a match chosen for broadcasts around the world just make sure you check to see if you are able to stream it and like we said before all the details are available online for that one so all the build up between now and kickoff will be uh, here pitch side and I'm pleased to say that Ian Stonebridge joins me for that Ian thank you for being here this evening how are you good thank you yeah I've gone brave with no jacket so far so it's my fault if there's a rain shower spring yeah. is spring is coming you're in the in the summer mood already really aren't you Ian I mean it will be nice uh, not only if the weather can stay like this but perhaps if Argyle can carry on the kind of positive trajectory they they seem to be picking back up again now yeah definitely I think you know four points from the last last two games is a is a good return and you might have well have, have taken that if you were offered that before those two fixtures so I think there's been some positive, positive signals. Um, hopefully that can continue tonight. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the season's nearly up. Um, not very many games left to go, but an awful lot still to play for, um, particularly for both of the sides this evening, albeit for different reasons. Yeah, there is. I, I, guess, I guess that's why we love football. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have it any other way, although clearly we'd, we'd like to be safe in this league. Mm -hmm. um, you know, nothing's going to be finally sorted tonight, obviously, but it's, a, it's another chance, as you say, for both teams to, to get really import, important mm -hmm. points in, in their respective aims. Do you think the different positions that each team find themselves in this evening... Do you think one is maybe slightly more motivational than the other, perhaps? I think they both are, but obviously in different ways. Mm -hmm. I think um, perhaps both teams find themselves in positions that, that they might have expected at the start of the season. So Leicester clearly were, were expected to be challenging at the top. Mm -hmm. um, for a long time, it looked like they were going to kind of run away with the league and, and not be challenged by anyone. They've obviously had a slight slight stutter recently. Mm -hmm. um, and for Argyle, you know, that I think the aim... The chairman, the, the coaching staff right across the season have, have, have suggested the aim is to stay in this league and, and that remains the case. You know, fingers crossed they can get something towards that tonight. Yeah, and I suppose that the, the match tonight is actually a bit of a testament as to why it's so important to stay in this league. You've got a really big team like Leicester coming here to Home Park, some big names, um, footballers a lot of people will be familiar with on an international level as well. Um, you know, it's really important for the club, isn't it? It is, uh, you know talk about the, those big teams Argyle earned the right to play against yeah. those big teams by the, the fantastic um, success they had last year so you know yes it's great to see them coming down here but we're playing at the same level of them mm -hmm. at this point in time and mm -hmm. so I hope the players kind of bear that in mind and, and go out with that kind of attitude that they can get something tonight yeah and, a, and another element of perhaps pressure as well in that you know um, this evening's match being televised also We've got a lot of cameras here this evening so again Argyle I want to going to want to put on a performance um, that they can walk away happy from. Yeah, definitely. I think for the club, that's fantastic. Those These sorts of occasions are, are, are brilliant to showcase the the club, the team and, and the city mm -hmm. as a whole. Uh, fingers crossed we can, we can, you know, put on a good show. Yes, well, I think that's uh, certainly what uh, everyone wants. And before we hear from our girls, uh, caretaker boss, Neil Doosnip, to see which side he and Kevin Nanskeville have chosen, we'll get that up on the screen for you now. We'll always start with the Argyle team, of course, on screen for you here. So, as we said, Neil and Kevin in charge today. Michael Cooper 
in goal for Argyle, of course. Barley Mumba, Julio Plegathuelo, Dan Scar, Ryan Hardy, Morgan Whitaker with the captain's armband tonight, Mikel Miller, Mustafa Bundu, Adam Randall, Brendan Galloway and Adam Forshaw. And on the bench, Connor Hazard, Jordan Houghton, Joe Edwards, Callum Wright, Alfie Devine, Lewis Gibson, Ben Wayne, Ashley Phillips and Freddie Isaka. Few changes in there, Ian, from the last couple of games we've had for Argyle. Yeah, it's interesting the the kind of scale of those changes. So, uh, again, maybe not a surprise that I think the last last couple of performances they've needed that freshness at times. And so, with the players that are coming in tonight, it's obviously a chance for them to to stake a claim for a place in these these remaining games of the season. But I think you know Bundu coming off the confidence of having an influence um, in the equaliser yeah. earlier in the week is a, is an interesting change and hopefully he can he can take the game to Leicester from the start tonight yeah and I've had this on my notes for a couple of weeks now but tonight now finally is Brendan Galloway's 50th start for the club um, hopefully this will be a pretty important game for him to make that mark yeah I think he's he's been impressive in the games he's been involved in recently you know offers that composure on the on the left hand side at the back if we see that that three that we're expecting um but more than that, I think he's defending as well. He's often got really important blocks in, uh, on occasions over recent games. And I think that's, that's something that hopefully we won't need too often tonight, but it's there if we need it. You know? Yeah, and we've got Callum Wright on the bench for Argyle tonight. Of course, came up through the ranks at Leicester. So that will probably add another interesting dynamic should he get to go on the pitch at some point this evening. Yeah, it does. I think you always want to prove yourself against your, your former clubs. And as you say, he's, he's come back into the team recently and... and done some some really positive things so hopefully he gets a chance tonight to, to do something more yeah well let's have a look at the Leicester side then that Argyle are up against this evening on the screen for you now Mads Hermanson James Justin Vout Faz Harry Winks Steffi Mavadidi Abdul Fatawu Pat Sindaka Ricardo Pereira Kiernan Dewsbury Hall Yannick Vestergaard and Wilfred Ndidi in the starting 11 and on the bench Jakub Stalarczyk Connor Cody Callum Doyle Jamie Vardy Hamza Chowdhury Dennis Prayet, Tom Cannon Eunice Atgun and Ben Nelson I mean Jamie Vardy there obviously a very big name Ian on the bench for Leicester tonight Yeah it's kind of I guess just a tiny bit uh nerving when the, the quality of the players that they can choose from means he doesn't get a start <laughs> yep. uh, particularly given his recent form but yeah you know there's there's obviously really strong players right the way through that team I think Dewsbury Hall in particular across this season as a whole has, has been really influential for them so it will be important I think for Randall and Forshaw in midfield to try and get a hold on, on him in terms of stopping the supply mm -hmm. um, between the lines there um, and Mavadivi coming in off the, off the left is you know uh, creative and a, and a a real handful so there's going to be I think plenty of defending to do tonight Argyle are going to need to stick together uh, across the 90 minutes yeah I mean Dewsbury Hall is a player of the season nominee um, so that obviously his goal scoring record in you know as a player as a whole this season is you know stands for itself but to have that accolade as well as you approach the end um, it's a great one to have under your belt for him it is and I think you know th those sorts of players will perhaps expect dropping down from the the Premier League to to have been influential you know he's I think in particular as as um, in terms of his productiveness assists and goals has been has been really good um, yeah. and I think that's something that as we say are going to need to stay nice and compact defensively to try and stop that supply tonight. Yeah, well, you know, you said when you have the likes of Jamie Vardy on the bench, it's just a testament to how much quality there is in the side. Um, three England internationals, Cody, Justin and Vardy, um, <laughs> on paper as well, second highest scorers and second best defence. So it's all looking pretty good for Leicester tonight, isn't it? Yeah, it does. It, you know, as, as we already mentioned, Argyle earned the right to, to play at this level mm -hmm. and I think that's to be expected. We don't need to be... Yes, you, you give them respect and, you know, those, the names that we've reeled off, the names they, they get to choose from, clearly they're, they're flattered for, for the choice they have there. Yeah. Um, but it's 90 minutes, it's on the pitch, both teams have got 11 at the start and, yeah. and I think Argyle can take some confidence from their, their recent progress and hopefully take that into the game today. Yeah, and of course they're in the championship just as well as we are. Um, and they lost their last game against Millwall, which, you know, unexpected, I think. Yeah, it was. I mean, you, again, credit to Millwall, you sort of see the quality of their... Of the, of the goal that it took to beat Leicester, mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a fantastic strike, and, and there were some, you know, desperate goal line clearances from Millwall as well. But again, uh, you, you expect to have to do that against against the Leicester team. So there might be some of that from Argyle tonight, mm -hmm. you know. But hopefully, we can also 
uh, take the game to Leicester and, and threaten their goal as well. Yeah, well, you never know what's going to happen on the night, do you, Ian? And it is a tough task for Argyle, of course, but they are unbeaten in their last couple of matches because they backed up a win last Friday with a one-all draw here against QPR earlier in the week. Drives up over the halfway line, those long legs of Ashley Phillips. Now Whitaker, central position. Does he fancy a strike? He does! It's not far wide either. Down, yeah, down the other end, Shayev is in behind the Argyle defence, in towards the middle. Smith gets to it, hits the side netting. The in swinging option of Morgan Whitaker or the out swinger of Adam Randall over this. And Whitaker goes for goal! Oh, what a save from Begovic! Never really got it under control, Ryan Hardy, there, did he? Dykes has got beyond Dan Scott. Smith on the far side. Cooper with a brilliant save. With a brilliant save. Because that was 1 0 QPR. End of that shot. There's Barley Mumba. Paul Smith is back doing the defending, but he's lost it to Mumba. Looks to get his shot away. Begovic palms it clear. This is when our goes away. That's a, an errant ball in the middle by Barley Mumba. Gives it straight to Queen's Park Rangers, and now they look to attack again with Smith. Incisive burst from him. A couple of QPR players in the middle. It's a deflected cross. Oh, what a header clear by Scar. Dykes and Fields trying to make a nuisance of themselves around Michael Cooper. As Shair delivers, hangs it up. Headed towards goal. That's an outstanding save from Cooper, and it's forced in. Queen's Park Rangers take the lead. Gibson forward. Mumba gets it again. Drops his shoulder into the box. Right-footed drive is saved by Begovic. Randall is over it. Up goes the signal. In swinger. Begovic comes, doesn't win it. Bundy! So, Ian, one all on Tuesday. What did you make of the game? I mean, clearly, we've, we've mentioned the points mm -hmm. are the most important thing at this, at this point in the season. And I think um, to get a point from the game was perhaps the, the kind of most we could expect for. Mm -hmm. you know, the, I think the performance from a, for a home game against QPR, who are in and around us in the league, was, was slightly disappointing. Okay. I think from an attacking perspective, we, we could have offered more of a threat. Um, and in the end, when you look at, the, I think, the balance of, the, of chances and the quality of chances at times that, that QPR had, you could probably say we were a little bit fortunate mm -hmm. to, to get the one-all draw in the end. Um, do, you, do you feel maybe Argyle could have brought a little bit more considering, you know, they were back at home park, they were, you know, back in front of a, a sold-out stadium and it was their first game under uh, the change of management? Yeah, I think that's fair to say. I think the, you know, the onus of being back at home, as you say, the, a place where over the last couple of seasons has been a really positive yes. place in terms of performances and results, lots of, lots of goals being scored. I think um, when you think about those kind of memories that you have of, of, of games here, um, that didn't really seem to translate and, mm. and be reflected in the performance. So, again, it's, it's, a, it's a tough ask tonight, but I think the showing that attacking intent and don't, don't get me wrong there were certain players mm -hmm. I think and, and certain times in the game where there was that um, you know the attempt to go forward the attempt to try and create something but I just felt we were a bit lacking in that mm -hmm. quality in the final third really yeah we saw the same lineup on Friday as we did on Tuesday there is a slight difference um, in the squad tonight so do you feel like those changes may help to demonstrate or show a little bit more of that difference that you're looking to see in Argyle now I think whenever there are changes in the in the personnel, it's a, it's always an opportunity for those players coming in, in particular, to you know really stake a claim a claim for the, their position in the, in the team. And with five changes in tonight's um, starting eleven, you know that should really be in evident. Those those players that are coming in, they're des they should be desperate to be involved, desperate to influence the game. Um, you know, particularly those um, you know. Bundu coming on in that forward area, you know, we, want to, we really want to see him itching to make a real nuisance of himself, um, creating chances. We know he's got the abilities, um, scored some, some fantastic goals for us, but, you know, doing that on a consistent basis and trying to influence the game across the, the 90 minutes tonight, yeah. if he can, would be, would be great to see. Yeah. While the game may not have been perhaps the most engaging or, or thrilling for a variety of reasons, 
we of course on Argyle TV and in the commentary, you know, like to provide some stats and, and facts to fans watching. And of course, Argyle were on this five uh, run losing streak here at Home Park, which fortunately was prevented by that draw. Do you think, you know, how important is stopping that kind of rot? Because if it had got to the sixth game, it would have been, you know, unheard of um, for Argyle. Do you think that was something that's acutely maybe in the staff, in the players' minds? I think uh, as much as they will say that it's not, these sorts of things do get spoken about. Yeah. And, you know, they don't exist in a bubble. They don't, um, they're not immune to the criticism. They're not immune to the, to the coverage that goes on around them. So, yeah. um, you know, same way when I played, I think, I think we went 18 months without winning an away game. Wow. So, um, you know, that was something that was talked about mm. quite, quite mm -hmm. a lot. And when we finally got the win, that was, it was a big deal. Yeah. So I think, yeah, some, to get something from the game and to, to kind of break that little run in the same way that getting the first away win yes. um, under Ian Foster was, was, was a big milestone. And again, something that the team took confidence from. Yeah. I do think that, you know, that getting a result in that game just an important thing given the changes uh, behind the scenes in the, in the club recently yeah perhaps hopefully it's a maybe a little bit more of a slow build up in the sense that we've gone from a series of losses to a draw to you know you never know a win uh, this evening and and the character for Argyle as well to come back after going um, a goal down because 11 out of the last 12 matches here they have conceded first it's vital that I think you have that that capability and yes it's a it's a mental resilience thing, but it's also around that, that, that belief that you're capable of creating chances, capable of going and scoring. Um, you know, you could say the, the goal that was the equaliser, you know, in that last game was slightly fortunate, but yes. it came from Argyle pressure. It came from, from getting down this end of the pitch and, and putting their goal under threat. So, again, that confidence, you, you really hope the players can take that into today's game and, and have that make a difference. Absolutely. Well, um, there is a slight bit of breathing space now with uh, the four points picked up from the last couple of matches. And tonight will be a different and more difficult test, of course, for Argyle. But caretaker boss and director of football, Neil Dewsnip, sees it as nothing but an opportunity for the players. Really exciting opportunity. An opportunity for the players uh, to showcase what they can do against an outstanding football team opportunity for our supporters to show the nation what they're all about uh, we know that of course uh, but an opportunity for everyone to show the nation that we're quite a good football club yeah it, there, there's a lot riding on it for both sides which which you know at this stage of the season adds so much to matches doesn't it how how do you kind of see the fact that both sides are so desperate for points reflecting yeah. in the game well, they, they obviously uh, are pushing for promotion, uh, and, and not just promotion, they'll be looking to win the league, I'm sure. Uh, for us, it's about uh, gaining as many points as we possibly can, as quickly as we can, in order to stay in this league, which has been our goal all season long. Nothing has changed. Uh, I've heard one or two comments around, oh, it's like Leicester's a free hit, don't worry about that. Not a chance. Mm. Uh, if you said that to our players, they would scream at you. They see this as an opportunity to get one, three points even, uh, in our quest to, to survive. It's been a good you know, points accumulator over the last couple of days with the four points in the two games. Um, momentum is, is key, especially at this stage of the season. Do you feel that there is a bit of momentum behind the side now? Yeah, I think sensibly. Two, two games is not, not yeah. uh, a, a lot of criteria to go off. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we, if we can keep building, uh, not losing, winning somewhere in there as well over the next four games, then we'll be delighted. How, you know, how are you seeing the, the, the side at the moment, the squad at the moment, the sort of morale at the moment? Well, morale has always been good all year. I need to say that, whether that was Stephen as the manager or Ian as the manager or now myself and Nance. Uh, the players give everything for this football club. They really do. Uh, and I think the fans would see that. Sometimes we don't play as well as what we'd like to. Sometimes we, we, we get a little bit of bad luck, uh, uh, which I think we have had this season. But never have I thought morale was, was low, uh, so we're OK with that. Certainly today on the training field, if you'd have seen them training and the, the smiles and so on and the fun, uh, in a serious way, uh, I think everybody would have been impressed by, by today. 
And how much can that help, even just you know, there being a positive atmosphere around I think, the site? I think it helps uh, in terms of an overall mindset. I think it helps uh, in terms of belief of what you can achieve. And I think it helps, especially in, in the tough moments. Tough moments might look like defending a corner uh, consecutively five times in a row and you've got to survive. Uh, tough moments could be you threw one on one on the goalkeeper and you need to score. Uh, that's when I think that team density really, really helps. Just to, to kind of end on and to recap what you kind of said earlier about it being an opportunity against uh, against Leicester to show people because it's on Sky what, what the club's about. How, without getting too far ahead of ourselves, how much of a, a real boost would it be if the result was a positive one going into the last three matches? Uh, it would be an amazing uh, lift. Uh, we, we don't have a magic number of points that we're looking to achieve. We're just trying to get as many as we possibly can. So Friday is an opportunity to get three. Uh, if we can't get three, we'll get one. And if we can't get any at all, we'll ride on to the next game and try and do exactly the same and get three there. He's talking as positively as you'd expect, Ian. And, and how much of a difference does a mindset like that make, especially when it's a mindset at the narrow end of the season? Yeah, I think it's important. I think um, the biggest thing to, for the players to think about and the coaching staff is, you know, you, you, can't, wor you can't influence other results. Yeah. So worry about what you're going to do. You know, the, the next game tonight is, is Leicester, obviously, and that's the thing they can affect. And I'm sure that's what they focus on in their, kind of their messaging and their, and their preparation um, and leave the kind of the worrying and the constant refreshing of results to us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it certainly is tight at the bottom. Everybody is looking and uh, refreshing those points at the bottom of the table there. How do you see it going? Do you think goal difference is going to be a factor for us? Or, you know, are you looking straight at the points? Well... You know, it's nice. That column looks okay for us at the moment, doesn't <laughs> yeah. it? Um, it's, it's obviously games to go. I think, you know, um, I'm positive about the chances. I mm -hmm. think when you look at the fixtures, there's there's games there that, that we should be able to get something from. Mm -hmm. And and as you say, there's, there's I don't think there are easy games in this championship. I'm sure there's more surprises to come in terms of results. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully we can pull off one of those tonight and that would, that would really stand us in good stead going into those final fixtures. Yeah, I think it was one of those ones where you're looking at the fixtures throughout the course of the season and it was almost like initially Argyle started with the harder matches away from home and now they're having them at home. Um, where, whereas previously our away form wasn't as good and now you know we have seen a few a couple of away wins coming in recent days so hopefully that may work out in Argyle's favour. Yeah it would be it would be fantastic I think you know the atmosphere tonight's going to be going to be electric in here I'm sure it's going to be really noisy um, hopefully Argyle can, can can give the crowd something to get behind mm -hmm. um, and again if we can get anything from this game tonight that would be a really good thing I think going into those final fixtures. Yes when you say anything you mean the three whole I do points. absolutely but you know <laughs> but I think, there's a yeah, level of, of realism that has to be. Well, yeah I think uh, uh, you know if, if you if you looked at those that front of results mm -hmm. the three games and you said you know we were going to get you know four or five points yep. five points you know if we can win tonight clearly that'd be fantastic and, yeah you know let's be optimistic yeah yeah it's possible we like it we like a little bit of optimism here on argyle tv building up to another huge game here in the sky bet championship all of the details on how you can get your streaming passes are available online right now
Welcome back. Now, tonight is Argyle's second Project 35 takeover of the season. And as you'll know, Project 35 is a charity to help tackle poverty in Plymouth at Argyle, the Community Trust and Ginsters support hugely. The supporters of the football club have had a massive impact on the great work that has been done so far. And you can have a look at it all in this short video about the last time that Project 35 took over Home Park in December. We're here at Home Park Stadium for our third Project 35 takeover game in partnership with Ginsters. We're really excited to be joined today by our Pledge 35 volunteers as well as Ginsters staff supporting the collection of the non-perishable goods that are going to go towards our food larder but also the wider food network in Plymouth. We're actually really thrilled to be back as a Ginsters team to help with the, the Project 35 Canned Food Poverty. Um, it's really important to us. You know, we, we collected uh, over two, two tonnes at the last game and uh, we're looking to smash that target today. Uh, we've just donated a few bags of toiletries and food, um, items that we know that other people could probably benefit from. And yeah, we're looking forward to enjoying the match today. I'm originally from Soak area, but I'm supporting our girl all the way today. Yeah, it's, it's lovely to see that the, the local community is supporting um, homelessness and poverty. It's very important that obviously you help the community. It's uh, been a thing that Plymouth have been doing all through, through last season as the main sponsor and obviously on the back uh, of the shirts this time. Today was the day that they were having their uh, bring a item of food to donate, etc. And I thought I'd uh, participate. Football clubs are uh, a focal point for the community to come together, obviously hopefully enjoy a, a Saturday afternoon out and if we can help the rest of the community that are unfortunate and not enough to be able to help themselves then obviously it's the best opportunity and football clubs are pivotal in uh, bringing communities together. It's, it's so important to, um, to see Project 35 blossom, um, we've given over 50 thousand meals away uh, since the project started, uh, I think 14,000 items to people in temporary accommodation and it's only through everyone coming together, our goal, Ginsters and, and the other partners and all the volunteers that have made it possible to give so much away. And it's not just through food banks and donations that Project 35, in partnership with Ginsters, are helping change lives. Initiatives like Healthy Habits are helping people in the city and surrounding areas become a little bit more aware of nutrition and their overall health. Healthy Habits aims to empower young people to support their community and learn about food support. And here is a little bit more about it. The Healthy Habits programme is being delivered as part of Project 35 in partnership with Ginsters, activating change through food. We're here at Horror Bridge. We've been working with our Year 5 students that have been taking part in the Healthy Habits programme as part of Project 35. So today it was really a case of wrapping up their social action project and seeing them working in action and delivering the food that they donated to um, a community project that they'd highlighted. The aim of Healthy Habits is to empower young people to support their community and learn about food support. It's split into two elements, so we have the 45 minutes where they're in the classroom, learning about food support and education around food, and then the second half of the lesson is around activity and sports. We have been planning a fundraiser for fruit and veg that we would give that we are going to give out to people that can't really afford food at the moment and maybe people that really really need it. I joined because I thought it would be a fun thing and also um, I would like to help the community. I feel excited because we get to help people and if they don't have any food we just get to help them. It's just tougher getting through the summer so we just need to really help some people. When I had a phone call from Mr Clark to say that the children had chosen the food bank which is who uh, Horbridge Love Your Neighbour partner with, um, I was just really surprised to hear that the children had chosen us as a community um, support 
for the fruit and vegetables to go and share them out into the community. We've got a lot to learn from these children. I think it's absolutely incredible just listening to them about the five week, six week process that they've been on, the friendships that they've created, the choices that they've made, the thought that they've thought about other people and the needs of others in the community. Um, and then to come up with that idea, which is so fun and easy to do, dressing up, bringing fruit and vegetables. I think it's just amazing. Future leaders. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's massively important, you know. Um, any way that the, uh, the trust in the community can, you know, put on sessions like this, um, you know, get a few of us down, uh, it's only going to be beneficial for, you know, for the kids taking part. Um, it's going to just be beneficial for the whole community in the city in general. Thank you, as always, for the generosity and support you show to Project 35 and other charitable work that the Argyle Community Trust do. It definitely goes a long way to helping people in and around our city. This is the pre-match show on Argyle TV with me, Erin Black and Ian Stonebridge. We are building up to a huge night of championship action at both ends of the table. Leicester City are visiting Home Park for the first time in almost 14 years. And they are, of course, looking for an immediate return trip to the Premier League. But they are locked in a tussle with Ipswich and Leeds for that automatic promotion spot. And they'll be looking for a reaction tonight after a surprise 1-0 loss to Millwall earlier in the week. There'll be a few more at Preston, by the way. It's Plymouth on Friday, which is sold out, 1,700. More than 5,000 tickets available. There's uh, Dewsbury Hall to Vardy. That might be his first touch, you know. And he couldn't quite get enough pace on the shot to really test Sarkic. But in the blink of an eye there, Leicester almost cut through Millwall for the opener. That's ah, a magnificent, I think it's Ricardo. And they've played it down that left-hand side to Longman, who can run at Winks here. And he's got to the edge of the box, Longman, and he's shot! Oh, it's in! It's an extraordinary strike! And a solo goal, which has sent the den potty! Millwall have opened the scoring here on a key night in the championship. Pratt here, he's released Ricardo. Sarkic makes the save. That is Leicester's best chance of the night after 82 minutes. Who had the header, but in open play here, his first chance to run. And he's done so magnificently into the box, pulls it to Iannaccio off the line. That is heroic defending. How on earth has Billy Mitchell kept that out? Leicester looked like they'd scored. That's a great run, magnificent pace. Back to Pratt. Great run from Dennis Pratt. He's got there. He's lifted the ball in his Dakar's header. It's wide. Ian, we are, of course, preoccupied with what's going on down at our end of the table, but it is just as tight at the top as it is at the bottom, isn't it? Yeah, it is. There's a, a great battle going on. I think maybe Ipswich perhaps didn't expect to, to be involved in that, but they've had a fantastic season. Mm -hmm. uh, Leicester clearly expected to, to be in and around that and Leeds as well. Yeah. And yeah, it's, there's there's huge implications for those clubs if they go up and you know whoever it is, it's a it's a fantastic achievement. It's a really tough league, I think, to, yeah. to get out of. And each of those three, I think, at various times, and, and Southampton as well, yeah. who went on a really long unbeaten run and looked like they were going to put themselves in the picture at, at, at one point. Um, you know, those those clubs, I think other than Ipswich, perhaps you expect to be at the top of the table yeah. there. Yeah, I mean, Ipswich, a phenomenal uh, run that they're on at the moment. But the top four all dropped points this week, which I guess is another testament to the, the, the chaos that is the championship. Yeah, it is. I think the maybe it's a different type of pressure, particularly for Leicester, you know, when they've been in the Premier League. Um, they've, they've had perhaps that, that 
kind of flash in the pan success when they, they were champions but other than that maybe not used to competing at the top of the table and, and as I think we alluded to earlier it's a it's a different type of pressure um, the expectation on those players make no mistake I think mm -hmm. it's it's it, it can hang heavy on them and yeah. I think um, you know maybe that's partly behind some of these the hiccups that we've seen from those clubs recently yeah do you think um, Leicester's form is of any concern you know, to them also in particular, because like you said, they are vying for that automatic promotion, but they've lost five and only won four of the last 10 matches. So, you know, it's peaks and troughs. Yeah, I think what you can say, uh, you know, along with Argyle at the other end is at the moment it's in their hands still. So they'll, they'll be saying, look, if we if we take control of these games and we get the results we need, we can, we can we'll be promoted and, and maybe even promoted as champions. And, and I think that's the way they'll be looking at it. Likewise, Argyle, I think, you know, if we... If we can get results and, and take control of our own destiny, that's obviously uh, the ideal situation. I mean, we have seen through Argyle in previous seasons, you know, when you get towards the top and you get in that position where, you know, things are looking good, sometimes the pressure can get to you. Do you think that might be the case with Leicester at the moment? Yeah, it's difficult to put your finger on it. When you look at their games, you know, that, that Millwall game, it's a, it's a fantastic goal that they're beaten by yeah. and they create plenty of chances themselves. Um, lots of clearances off the line, things like that, where, you know, you say on another day, the, the, the luck goes differently and they yeah. win that game comfortably so in, in lots of these situations it can be just luck going slightly the wrong way and, and maybe that's what's affecting some of these teams at the moment hopefully they can have some more bad luck tonight yeah well so it certainly feels like Argyle are due some uh, good luck for sure uh, but uh, Leicester's manager Enzo Mresca isn't too concerned about perhaps bad luck or any dropped points of late but he does know that they are going to need to get some momentum to propel them towards the end of the season in this moment, uh, I said after Millwall, I said after Norwich, especially in the last month, two months, in this moment there is no time to think about uh, what's happened in the last game. Uh, you have to be already focused in the next one. So even after Millwall or after Bristol or after Norwich, uh, Birmingham, the message was always clear. Uh, guys, now there is no time to think about uh, the game we won today against Birmingham. Focus in the next one. After Millwall, the message was exactly the same also because thanks to the to the organization we played Tuesday night arrive here at three o'clock in the morning today we need to travel we have five hours back from Plymouth but uh, the organization decide that and we are the only team play Tuesday night and Friday in this moment with our competitors the only one that we played two games away but uh, I don't think people care too much about players, healthy players, because otherwise you cannot understand this kind of a decision. And as I said, we arrive here at 3 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday, and they are human beings. And if someone is worried about healthy players, it's not the correct thing to do. Are you concerned about the health of your players? Absolutely, yes. Absolutely, no doubt. Absolutely, 100%. What? About my players and about all the players that they play after 48 hours, two games in a row away, Plymouth the longest trip of the season and arriving at three o'clock in the morning. And then if the players they don't perform, they are bad. No, no, they are not bad. They are human beings. And we played already 50 games this season, 41 in the championship, eight, nine, almost 50. But they are human beings and people don't care about that. Plymouth next up, and so what have you made to them in your analysis? No, we'll be like uh, we'll be like Millwall. They play to survive, so we'll be we need to embrace that. Uh, but yeah, the good thing is that now for every club it's almost almost the same. The time is 20 to 8. We are getting closer to kickoff here on Argyle TV, and we've got the final bit of build-up coming up next.
let's remind ourselves then of the team news for this evening. There are five changes for Argyle tonight and the starting 11 look as follows. Michael Cooper, Barley Mumba, Julio Plegathuelo, Dan Scar, Ryan Hardy, Morgan Whitaker in the captain's armband, Mikhail Miller, Mustafa Bundu, Adam Randall, Brendan Galloway and Adam Forshaw. And on the subs bench, Connor Hazard, Jordan Houghton, Joe Edwards, Callum Wright, Alfie Devine, Lewis Gibson, Ben Wayne, Ashley Phillips and Freddie Isaka. Ian, considering how big of a game this is, for Freddie Isaka to be included on the team sheet against what is a huge side, fantastic for him. Yeah, it's brilliant. I admit to being slightly disappointed that he hasn't been involved in the last couple. Yeah. Uh, brilliant to see him on the on the bench and, and uh, you know, I'm excited about the prospect of him getting on the pitch. I still think he could play an important part in this end of the season. You know, I think um, he has that pace, he has that ability to, to really change a game. So I'd be yeah. excited to see him get on tonight. Do you, you know, I mean, if he is able to get some minutes coming into the, you know, final leg of the season, do you think that's going to bode well for him going into next season? Definitely. I think, you know, he's clearly still young. Any experience you get on, on the pitch in the first team is fantastic when, yeah. you, when you're Freddie's age. Um, I think he's capable. I think he can um, influence the game, as we said, and, and I'd love to see him get that chance. Yeah, yeah well, fingers crossed. Maybe yeah. we'll get to see him get a run out tonight. Let's have a look at the Leicester City team then, our opposition for tonight. Mads Hermanson, James Justin, Vout Faz, Harry Winks, Steffi Mavadidi, Abdul Fatawu, Pat Sindaka, Ricardo Pereira, Kiernan Dewsbury Hall, Yannick Vestergaard and Wilfred Ndidi. And on their bench, Jakob Stolarczyk, Connor Cody, Callum Doyle, Jamie Vardy, Hamza Chowdhury, Dennis Prayat, Tom Cannon, Eunice Atgun and Ben Nelson. Um, Ian, you flagged Kiernan Dewsbury Hall earlier, um, of course, and we've spoken about Jamie Vardy. Um, on the whole, though, it's a big, it's a big team for Argyle to go up against. It is. They've got quality right the way through. You know, you look at someone like Harry Winks in, in midfield. Lots of lots of Premier League experience. Um, but you know, as we've already talked about extensively tonight. That's that's what you expect, I think, at this level, particularly from the teams that come down from the Premier League um, into the Championship. Uh, it's a great challenge for Argyle to face tonight, and you know, I think they're they're more than capable of, of standing up to it. Mm. And. I saw earlier on in the week, I think, you know, this is this is a bit of a, a trip for Leicester. Um, possibly, you know, not used to the kind of travelling, particularly in the way that Argyle are. Um, do you think that will obviously factor into it? Because like we said, they've not been down here for 14 years. No, I think the perhaps that, that, that novel nature of it being a, a fresh place to go for them, but also a little bit of that journey time maybe could... could go in Argyle's favour tonight, mm. yeah. And then, Ian, you know, final thoughts from you. Obviously, we hope Argyle win the game. What do they need to do to try and capitalise, to try and um, counter whatever Leicester are putting out there? Yeah, look, I think they're going to have to be compact. They're going to have to be really disciplined in defence, you know, stick together, make sure that when a player gets beaten, that there's somebody else there to engage that, mm -hmm. that attacker. Um, there's going to need to be last ditch blocks and saves, I'm sure. Yeah. But equally, going the other way, I think Argyle can put pressure. Leicester will, will clearly want to build up from the back. Um, Argyle have shown themselves at various points to, to be able to disrupt that and hopefully yeah. if we can win the ball high up the pitch you know we've got some pace in the team and, and hopefully Bundu coming in can, can offer us something different tonight as well um, yeah. and we can get a real threat on, on the Leicester goal. Yeah it would be absolutely fantastic to see Argyle uh, toe to toe with Leicester tonight and we are the only match that's being played tonight of course so uh, lots of Lots of people, I'm sure, tuning in to see what Argyle are capable of. There is a full schedule over the weekend, though. Blackburn, QPR, Huddersfield and Birmingham all have tough games coming up against promotion hopefuls. Millwall host Cardiff, and it's a huge game at the bottom as well between Stoke and Sheffield Wednesday. So I think... Ian, like you said, when it comes to this point of the season, um, while the players might not be keeping an eye on you know, the table, everyone certainly will be over the course of this weekend, won't they? Yeah, they will. Last time we played on the Friday and then spent the Saturday gradually thinking, that, you know, excited about watching the other teams yeah. suffer and then it didn't quite transpire. You know, this week, Wednesday night was, was more positive for Argyle. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, players go out there, focus on their job and, yeah, we'll, we'll get sore fingers from refreshing those, those pages <laughs> as we look at those scores. Yeah. yeah, well, just before we hand away to commentary for tonight's game, let's get a final thought from the Argyle dressing room as first team coach Kevin Nanskville has been speaking with Charlie Price. Uh, Nats, huge game. 
Um, they always are, but but this one, for, for differing reasons, has a lot on it for both sides, doesn't it? Yeah, now we're at the, uh, the nitty-gritty part of the season now, so it's really important for both teams. Um, so we're good to go and we're excited about it, so let's, let's take it on. I, um, I mentioned this to Neil uh, in the pre-match press about building a little bit of momentum. It is a couple of games unbeaten. I know it's a small sample size, but that's a start of what we'd hope to extend, wouldn't we? Yeah, definitely. Four points from two games. Um, we're really pleased with that. Now we just want to make sure that momentum keeps going. Like you said, boys have trained really well. They're focused. They're prepared properly. So uh, we're looking forward to it. Right. Talk us through the team. Yeah, it's five changes. Um, we just want to freshen it up. It's been a tough time, uh, a lot of games. Um, so we've got some fresh energy, fresh legs into the team. Hopefully that'll uh, help us. One of the changes I know is Brendan Galloway coming in. It's his 50th start for Argyle today. Um, he's, a, he's a class player, but, but like you said, just to, to freshen things up, those those sort of things. Those changes. Yeah, it's just that. Brendan's a top quality defender, as we all know, uh, as, as everybody in our squad uh, plays a role to play. So, uh, no problem. The boys coming in are fresh and ready to go, so we're looking forward to it. Just a, a quick one on, on Leicester City. Um, we mentioned they're, they're, they're looking to try and get some points to get promotion back to the Premier League. There's some real class in their team isn't it yeah they're a top team that's why they're uh, top of the league and potentially going to be champions elect so but they're not champions elect at the minute um, and we're going to give them a right good go um, and see where we can get at them and just finally supporters again there's another display planned all of that sort of stuff it was great wasn't it on Tuesday yeah. same again today you yeah fantastic I, again I've said it enough time I can't say it enough time really they, how big a part they play in helping us the support is brilliant the flags uh, Nick from these PAFC displays the job they do is tremendous and hopefully we get another rousing evening at Home Park tonight Right, well, we are pretty much ready to go here on Argyle TV then. A reminder that match passes are available. If you haven't got them already, you can head over to the website to do them. Ian, I'm not going to push you for a score. We'll see how it goes. I should say Pilgrim Pete did come by during one of the videos and has predicted a 3-1 win for Argyle. I would expect nothing less of Pilgrim Pete, and I will be holding him personally accountable should that not happen. Uh, make sure you stay with us throughout the course of the evening. We'll be keeping you up to date with everything that goes on here. Charlie Price and Aaron Kuzak are your commentators for this evening's game, and they are standing by. So without any further ado, Ian, thank you very much. Thank you to those of you watching. Enjoy the game. It is Argyle versus Leicester coming up next. <laughs> 